Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to repair a gas burner that won't light. Um, I recently installed this KitchenAid gas stove and all of the burners were good except for one. All of these burners worked. So I'll show you this one here. This burner worked. This burner worked. And then this back burner worked. But I had problems with this front burner and this is the front the front burner actually worked at the very front here all around the perimeter but this center one this is what they call the uh, simmer so if you just want that burner to, to work this is the simmer burner here so when I turned this on and it was put in the light position and I had it on simmer here it would not light up and I you know once you pass that and you get it into the power burner it wouldn't light either because the light was on so the only way to get my power burner to work was I had to actually turn on one of the other burners in the light position keep it in the light position and then turn this all the way to the power burner and then of course it would light up okay but I didn't want to have to do that all the time so I decided I would try to repair it so again what was happening was in in here you can see there's the this is your uh, spark Mod the spark modulator initiates a spark between that and that and oh, that's getting hot there <clears throat> so the spark was was functioning okay but I wasn't getting any gas coming out of this part of the burner so it was like tiny little bit of gas coming out and you could see it was just like trying to light but it wouldn't light so the problem to me was you know insufficient gas because the, the per I could see that it was coming around the, the, the larger power burner but it wasn't coming from the center. So um, I'm going to show you what I, what I ended up doing and uh, and how to make this repair as quick and uh, as easy for you. So first thing we'll do is we'll make sure the it's not hot anymore. We'll remove the top grates here. These are quite heavy, so be careful. Then we'll remove burner covers and so that's the burner and again it was no gas coming from the center at first I tried uh, without any luck I tried poking in some uh, you know just some uh, wire here but obviously what I was doing was I wasn't really sure I was poking in here poking around hoping I was you know gonna free up whatever debris might be clogging it but of course I wasn't getting the, the, the the orifice uh, pierced. I ended up using a little piece of wire uh, that's a little bit thinner and it was able to, to get to it but not until I actually removed the burner. <clears throat> I looked around online and I did see a couple of videos that said we have to re remove the, uh, the burner um, so that's what I tried to do. Unfortunately when I did that if you look over here on this burner this burner has uh, looks like a torque head so I, I tried putting the Torx head on here and what was happening was it, it wasn't coming off and eventually I just popped the heads off. I can show you here. The heads were just breaking right off. They were really seized on pretty bad. So here you can see this is one of the heads that popped off and these are the, the screws that I ended up taking out. So once the heads popped off I couldn't uh, I couldn't actually remove the burner because the, 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 the part of the screw that was left inside was still uh, in there and I couldn't get it out. So um, <clears throat> in the end I ended up drilling out the, uh, the, the parts of the screw that were left and I had to uh, repair it by putting in some other screws. So I'm just going to remove those screws now. These are the screws that I put in as replacement to what was there. So what I did was I used a drill, so I found a drill here that was approximately the same size as the, uh, the screw and I, I drilled right through. What happened to me was it actually, um, <clears throat> I'll just show you here, I'll take the burner off here. So, yeah. so what happened here was you can see where I drilled. <clears throat> as soon as it hit the the metal of the of the screw, what was left over of the screw, 
it kind of pushed off so I didn't actually drill in the screw I, I drilled a little bit outside of that this is softer this is aluminum and uh, it kind of drilled you can see here I don't know if you can see that I'll try to zoom in a little closer for you so you can see that let me see if I can't get a little closer so there you can see what happened I ended up screwing just beyond outside but that's okay I mean I, what ended up happening was was a little piece of screw left in there and that little piece of screw that was in there I just used a vice grip and I was able to just kind of pry it I threw put some uh, WD-40 on it and I was able to pop those pieces of screws out of uh, all four of those holes here what I did was I just put some I put some tape on that just to cover that up that hole because uh, that screw hole there was some gas leaking out of there after I put it all back together so there's one more screw here what I'll do is I'll remove that screw for you so you can see this was so this one this is the bottom part of the burner and this is the part of the, the, the center part that wasn't lighting so I had to remove also this and and like the other ones all of these were all seized so one and and two and three were all seized so what I did was I took this one off and once that's off then this burner would come right off okay yeah so this burner just this bird part of the burner came off and then you can see where I had screwed here uh, drilled sorry passed outside of the actual hole and I drilled out the pull out the rest of the screw and I drilled it through properly and the same thing with those I, I this was the only one that I was able to remove these were stubborn this could wouldn't come off no matter how hard I tried to yank on it with a I couldn't get a vice grip on it hard enough a needle nose vice grip couldn't pull it off and same with this one but anyway I was able to put it uh, uh, put it all back together with just the one screw that you saw me just remove now this was the culprit this is what was causing the problem and this is the, the, the little orifice so what I did was I just used a uh, seven millimeter uh, socket here and I just put that on there we go and I was able to take that off and once I had that removed you can see here there's the orifice and you can see that tiny little hole there I don't know if you can see that but let's uh, take it up so we can see there you can see that tiny little hole there so what I did was I used a pin and I'll just put that back in for now I used a pin okay so as I said I just used a pin here in this case I took a pin and I kind of played around with it here until I was able to get it right through and then you know tried to clean it out now I, I could have probably done this without having to do all that what I showed you and, and damaging the, the burner screws and all that what holds it all together but again I didn't know and uh, so if you can get to it uh, you probably need a longer pin to get to, to, to this and you have to kind of play around until you actually get to that part and if you're successful doing that you won't have to take the burner off if, if it's uh, you know if your if your screws are are <clears throat> seized on like mine were here um, if that's the case you should be able to to do it that way and then what I found was uh, you know I got something longer here I was able to use this uh, piece of wire it took stripped off the insulation and that fit in here pretty good I kind of bent the wire a little bit you can see it back and forth and that kind of made it a little e difficult to get in but it also give it some friction on the side so that allows it to kind of when you push it in and out to actually clean the surface on the inside and so I'll put that all back on now that little socket get it tight but not too tight okay so that's the way that goes and then I put this burner back on there's a little hole here to line up the uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, spark module spark so put that on like that and what I found was because I couldn't take those other screws off 
they ended up staying in place but I was able to get at least one screw in here and by putting that one screw in there it's kind of a self-tapping I used a self-tapping screw and I, I tried to work it in before I put this on and I found that it was going to work fine so I, I was able to get that screw in there so you can see I'm doing I'm uh, just doing it like this manually without the impact driver so that holds this down fairly well not perfectly but at least it holds it down in that spot and then once I put the other burner on onto this I found that it was holding pretty pretty solid so then I put this burner back on I lined it up correctly so that we have yeah this is where the the, the gas is coming out for the power burner that's the outer burner so some gas goes in here through that little orifice and, and some of the gas is coming out another or larger orifice through this through this part here up into here and once you put this cover on it forces the gas to come out these little side, side um, holes there so let's get this guy back in place and I'm just using again these self tapping screws it's not the greatest you know uh, job but it doesn't matter for me it's uh, functional still and it holds it down so get those on you can see it's holding pretty good so it's not original it's not the original OEM but I'm telling you it still works this is a MacGyver fix what I call a MacGyver fix if you guys remember MacGyver but there you see that's pretty solid I mean um, and it still works great so uh, if I put this back on here now I'm gonna turn off the light here and I'm going to turn on this burner. I don't know if you can see that burner. Yeah, this is the simmer burner. So when I put it to the light position, there you go. See that? Isn't that beautiful? That I fixed that. That's the inside burner. And it'll go to medium, the simmer. It's very low right now. And then, boom, when it comes up on the high burner, now you got the middle and the high burner. So that's a repair. For any gas stove, if, if you want to see what one of these other ones look like, we can take a peek in there and I can show you what that looks like. You see, follow me here. So now we're looking like over the top of this other burner and you can see here, right in there, you can see the orifice there, you can see it. Um, so that orifice there, if you just get your needle in there, or in this case this little you can just try to get yourself lined up in there. It's hard to see with my finger in the way. But you'll get the hang of it. You'll have to kind of get a flashlight and poke around in there until you get it right in the hole. Yeah, there you go. See, I got it. I can just kind of fishing it in and out. I could feel it going in and then pull it right out. And that should help to clean up that orifice. You see, you can see that tiny little hole there. So that's how you go about doing it without actually removing the, these... Uh, these um, you can see also on this burner, I don't want to take a chance on this one. These uh, screws are also look like they're seized on pretty good. So without having to damage this, I can just poke around in there and loosen up any debris. You can see that tiny orifice there. And that makes the burner, keeps it clean and free so the gas can flow nice and you can get nice flame. Okay, so I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did, can you please uh, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.